Say amen. amen. Shall I hate fear? I hate fear. Open your Bible with me this morning to the, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Let's all stand for the reading of God's word. How many believe the Bible is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword? How many believe the word of God can set you free right now? You don't even need preaching. You can get free right now. Shout, I want to be free right now from fear. Let's shout it out loud. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. All right, let's change it up a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more personal. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Say, I've got the power. I've got the love. And I'm saying, praise the Lord. Now, how many believe you're saying this morning? You may be seated. <laughs> so you and I don't need to be dictated to. Our life does not need to be controlled by fear. But many Christians are literally controlled by fear. A spirit of fear has permeated the body of Christ at large. We can just take it in the economic value. How many Christians across the nation have stopped tithing? How many Christians across the nation have given up hope in Christ? Well, why is that? Because they've allowed a circumstance to bring fear into their life, and instead of trusting the Lord with all of their heart, leaning not to their own understanding, in all their ways acknowledging him and he would direct their path, they then take upon themselves their own path, their own direction, their own sanity. Now, there's nothing more scary than someone thinking that they're sane in and of themselves. I can prove it to you. It's an old example. How many of you ever get up in the mirror and maybe looked in the mirror and said, oh, my Lord, I've gained 20 pounds? <laughs> you looked in the mirror and you stared in the mirror and you said... You fat thing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, an A cup, dear Jesus. You stare in the mirror and you go, Lord, 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 I'm fat. And so you make a declaration. I am going on a diet. And so that morning, you know, you eat proper you know, you have just enough calories and you eat just the right things, you know. You might have gone online or bought a book, you know. And, and so here you are, you know, lunch comes around, you're behaving yourself. And that night, the company has a party. And so you've been invited to the party, you've got to go to the party. And everybody's supposed to bring some kind of snack food. And you get to the party and you walk over to the table. And there is a, a, a whole plate of not just chocolate chips, but ch 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 chocolate chips. Chocolate, chocolate chips. Hallelujah. And they're warm. You're looking at that plate of cookies and you start to salivate. You know, you ever seen a dog when you're holding something up and they start dripping on the floor? You know, and, and you're, you're just looking at that, the, the cookies and go. And your mind says to you, go ahead, man, just have one. You don't want to offend anybody, do you? And they are warm. You've behaved yourself all day long. One won't kill you. Did you pick up that one cookie? <laughs> Ecstasy. As the chocolate, chocolate, chocolate chip starts to melt in your mouth, and all of a sudden, the, the flavors start to, start to burst and explode, and you swallow. And your mind says, I told you, fat thing, you couldn't make it even one whole day, could you? <laughs> Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? You can't trust your own mind. 
This is the mind that you have when you have Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is in Jesus Christ. How many of you know that the mind of Christ will keep you sane? The mind of Christ will keep you stable. The mind of Christ will keep you enabling to live in every circumstance and situation, walking by faith and not by sight. But what happens is, many times in our lives, we allow that crack to come in. And then we look at our situation and it starts getting larger and larger. The impossibility, the mountain starts to grow. And then we're staring at the total impossibility. And now instead of us being the giant in Christ, we're that little mouse that's sitting on the end of the table wondering if we're going to make it even past this next day. And I want you to know today that if you're in that situation, today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day of your freedom. Today you're going to have that spirit of fear broken in your life and God is going to set you free. You no longer have to be controlled by fear. How many of you remember Susan? Where is Susan? Do you remember Susan? Do you remember that time? It was two or three weeks ago. Some of you need to buy a DVD. They were around the water cooler. And she had a great day, and all of a sudden, as she's at the water cooler at work, somebody comes up to her and starts sharing with her how bad their finances are, and they might have to go bankrupt. And Susan had never thought about that because as a sower and a tither and as a principles of God's word, she knew that if God was for her, who could be against her? But all of a sudden, she took on that fear of finances. Do you realize that nobody, nobody can give you fear? You and I have the opportunity to receive it or reject it. Nobody can put fear on you. You take it on yourself. So then somebody else came up to her at the water cooler and was dealing with, with health issues. And they said they had cancer. And, 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 and she's standing there, and she, all of a sudden she's realizing there's cancer on both sides of her, of her family. And that even as a youngster, she had struggled with cancer. But, but then what she did is she reached over and took that fear of physical sickness and put it on herself too. And then she dealt with family issues. She had just been married. Will she be able to make it? The person at the water cooler was married 28 years. And situation and situation, and the wife turned around and left him. And so she took on the fear of will her marriage make it. And all of a sudden, now we have a woman who came to work that day in freedom, but because she allowed the spirit of fear and opportunity, and she received fear in her life. Look at her now. She's defeated. She's shackled. The victory is gone, and the joy is gone. And how many of you know that's not God's desire for your life? I said, how many of you know that's not God's desire for your life? How many of you have ever experienced what she's experienced before? How many of you want to be free today? Today is your day. SWAT. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Take this yoke upon your shoulder and learn from me. For I am kind and gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus, I know you're the truth I've been searching for my whole life, but can I just be honest with you? I, I don't know how to pray like those people in church. I'm, I'm starting to learn the word, but I, I just want to be honest with you. I, I've done everything myself in my life. I put myself through school. I started raising my daughter alone, and I'm not used to relying on anybody. I believe it's cast your cares, but can you help me with the casting part? I don't- Cast your cares on me, Susan. It's hard, it's hard. I get in that fight or flight mode, and it's hard for me to let go. It's hard for me to share my burdens, but I want to. It's heavy. Cancer. Or 
course.